Again, this video, I'm going to show you how to run the G34B, one of the latest open source model on a Mac in an easy way using LM Studio. And it will run using your GPU. So you can see the different performance between using the CPU and the GPU. And this is going to be running on the M3 Max, 128 gigabytes. So this is the max out version of the best Mac that Apple is doing at the moment. So well, you're going to have this link. In this link, I'm going to share with you uh, the steps and the files that you need. So first things, we're going to install LM Studio. I'm going to click on that. You're going to download for your Mac. And this application, by the way, is available for Windows and Linux. And Linux is kind of tricky. It's not working properly as well at the moment. Uh, but you can try it as well. In Windows, will should be the same installation. So once you download, you're going to have a GUI interface like this one showing up here. And then the second thing we're going to do, we're going to, we need to point the file that we want to use. In this case, we're going to be using the blog G34 GGUF. GGUF is the new file um, version that it can handle uh, the metal support for the GPU on Mac. Okay. So it's like using CUDA, but uh, in Mac, we use metal to use the power of the GPU. Okay, so once you do that, we're going to open LM Studio now. And once you open LM Studio, you're going to have an interface like this, where you can find the model by just typing on the on the house. You can type G, and you're going to see a few of them. Now, we're going to use the blog G34B GGUF, or you can use, for example, uh, this one as well. We have a 200,000 uh, context window. I'm going to use just the first one, and then you're going to look up the options here. Now, important thing to consider and the reason I'm, I switched to the M3 Max is because this model is using more than 30 gigs of RAM. So you're going to have to keep in mind that if your Mac has 24 gigs or 16, this is probably not going to work. OK, so for the quantization versions, you have different options here. And what I recommend you always is go to the model car of the model. It's going to open a website and you're going to go down here. And he's going to usually the bloke is pretty good one He's going to tell you which one's best than uh, which one is better for running inference. You see here, large, very low quality loss recommended. So basically, most of the time, the KS is a pretty good one uh, to go with. That quantization is good. So we're going to use in the Q5 KS model. OK, so going back to Elm Studio, we're going to use that one. So you click here in the Q5 KS and then you click download. Once that load, uh, you're going to see here is downloading the model. And once it's finished, you're going to go to the chat version here. And then you're going to, I'm going to delete this chat and then going to load the model. And it's here is going to show all the models that you already download. So I have two of them. I have Llama 70 billion and then the G200K um, model. I'm going to click on that. And you're going to see here on the right side, you got a few parameters. Okay, so now that we have the model uh, loaded, the best parameter that I found to load the model with the settings is the default LM Studio for Mac OS, and you're going to have the same feature for Windows. So the same default LM Studio for Windows. So once you do that, the only thing you want to change here is you want to go down and you want to change the Apple GPU support. This means that it will use the GPU instead of a CPU. And we're going to see the load here on the left side. You're seeing then the RAM usage or GPU usage uh, memory at this point is 24 gigs. So if you have a 20, uh, an RTX 4090, you may be able to run it, but probably you're going to need more than that. And same thing goes for if you have uh, if you have an M chip from Apple that has less than 24 gigs of memory, it's probably not going to run. We're going to ask the model to write the Pi game, uh, Snake game. It's a pretty easy task, and most of the models have failed to this, to doing this. And I see that uh, ChatGPT, for example, is doing it uh, pretty good on GPT-4. So let's see how, how what it can do. Uh, snake game and Pi game using Pi game and Python. Okay, let's see what it does. There we go. So I want you to check as well the generation. So we're going to see that the generation, uh, uh, how fast it's generating, how many tokens per second is doing it. And as you can see here, it tries to, uh, for some reason, it was writing the code and then suddenly break the instruction and go back to the front. So, yeah. That's something that is not working properly. So we're going to do import this thing. It's not going to run any game just by writing this code. So people are saying that, yeah, you can modify, you can do instruction changes or whatever, but I don't want to do that. I want to see uh, this model to be performed uh, in a very easy way. It, it doesn't matter if you release a model and then uh, you have to deal with uh, interfaces or how to prompt properly to give you the answer that you're looking for. For example, if you download Llama 2, in any version of the Llama, you just run it here. 
click the setting and automatically you have a great response. So I think it's useless this part here. And uh, the output of the model, you see the speed. The speed is not as fast as Llama. Even Llama 34 billion is way faster than this one, uh, at least on the M3 Max. And what we're going to do here is we're going to disable the GPU. And this time we're going to run on the 16 core CPU. So you can see the difference of the output in the signal when the GPU. Uh, so you're going to see the difference when inference um, the model using the CPU or GPU. What you saw before was the GPU. Now we're going to run it on the CPU. Okay, we're going to run the model, reload the model again and then we're gonna do the same thing so right python let's let's make a new chat so right a python code for snake game for example and then you're gonna see how fast so you're gonna see here the cpu is being used right now because we're using 376 percent of the cpu and it's kind of slow it's loading everything on the cpu now and we're gonna see the reaction time so here we go so it's doing it pretty it's going pretty slow compared with using the GPU, okay? So that's thing to consider. Forget about the CPU, just go with the GPU, same way that we do on the PC, uh, where we don't use CPUs. Even if you have like a 96 core CPU AMD, the latest one, you're not gonna use that. You're probably gonna use an RTX uh, 4090 or an A6000 if you need more memory, but it's always better to run on the GPU than on the CPU. Okay, so you saw how slow that is, and it still is not doing properly. Uh, question here is not answering as it should, right? And the content lags right now is 1500 and the frequency scale. These are the settings that we have here. And maybe changing these settings works differently. But like I said, we need a plug and play solution where we can download the models, run it, and it works just fine. I'm not going to test anything else. But if you want to play around with it, you can download the model on LM Studio and play with it. I tried already with Olama and I had the same result. I could load the model into Olama, but when getting the outputs, it was not as easy to use as Llama 2, for example. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video on how to launch any model uh, using, for example, the LM Studio. It's going to be the same way. You download download this app for Mac or Windows, and basically you download the model, and then you can start uh, playing with it, and it will give you a lot of information about how many tokens per second it can do, and uh, the parameters you're going to use, and how much memory you're going to use on the GPU. So that's pretty interesting to see, but like I said, this video... I wanted to make it simple to download and launch and it failed to do that because it's not uh if you try to do it with llama 2 for example you're gonna have a great performance out of the box you download the model chat with it and you have a great performance using this application so it's everyone everyone can use it and i think that's the problem with open source models and they just upload the model and they don't uh, explain you how to run it or they just leave it all the table and give you just instructions that most people don't understand so you have to make it very simple. Like, for example, you upload a model, you put an interface like a Gradio interface or whatever, and you show a demo how to actually use it, at least to talk to it. Because on top of that, you can add multiple features uh, with all the software like LangChange and so on. But at least they should upload the model with the file, with the demo that is actually working and you can have and ask questions to it. Because otherwise, what's the reason of using these things? You just go and use ChatGPT because it's $20 a month. It's not, a, it's not that much when you look at what ChatGPT can do, especially now with GPT agents. So they have to, in order for this open source to be really usable and using your computers, they need to have a plug and play solution when you download and use the model. That's my thought. That's what I think. You have to make things very, very simple to use. Otherwise, people would not use it. That's the main reason why people use ChatGPT because it's a web interface and it's easy to use. All right, so you want to see more videos like this or if you want me to try different models on the Mac, let me know. I have the M3 Max, uh, Max out version and I'm planning to do the Falcon uh, 180 billion model running for the next video. All right, I hope you enjoyed this one and I see you on the next one. Bye-bye.